Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add users, how to delete users, and then how to modify a user profile. So doing things like changing passwords for users. Now, the important thing to understand in the Linux world is that doing these types of tasks in the Linux world only seem complicated because it's so much simpler than the Windows world. So if you're deal used to dealing with Windows administration, especially in an Active Directory environment, there are so so many amazing things that you can do with user accounts in the Windows world, right? And so when you go to Linux, you're expecting to be able to do all those amazing things in Linux, and then you think you just don't know how to do it, and then you get frustrated, and then you give up. Uh, the reality is, is that in the Linux world, basically how users work, how groups work, and how permissions work is a hell of a lot simpler than the Windows world. So if you overthink it, if you try to make it more complicated than it actually is, that is going to run you into problems. So I'm going to show you how to use the add user command. So basically using the add user command allows you to add users to a system. I'm going to show you how to change passwords. So how to change your own password and how to change passwords for somebody else. I'm going to show you something called the password file or the password password file uh, in the ETC directory. This actually contains all of your user accounts. So you can go there and see what users are in your Linux system. Uh, so you can make sure if they're there or if they need to be removed. Um, I can show you how to use something called a CHFN command. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to change the profile of the user uh, within Linux. I'm going to show you something called user mod. We're not actually going to use user mod today, but user mod is a nice little command that allows you to do things such as lock user accounts. Uh, so that might be useful for you. Uh, then, then I'm going to show you how to delete a user. And then one of the important things, a cleanup task, is I'm going to show you then how to remove uh, the user profile directory that is created when Linux creates a profile to begin with. Uh, this is one of those important things that, again, this can become one of those maintenance issues where when you create a user account, in Linux, uh, it creates a folder uh, for the, the profile in the home directory uh, with all the profile information. Uh, one of the weird things in the Linux world, kind of like, eh, not really sure why that happens, I suppose that there's a reason, is that when you delete the user account, it doesn't even give you an option uh, for deleting that profile directory, uh, so you simply have to go and then actually remove the directory manually uh, to make sure you don't get bogged up with a whole bunch of old user directories uh, that aren't of any value anymore. So with that, let's go over to the computer. I will show you how these commands work in the Linux world. And again, the important thing to remember here is that Linux, when it comes to users, is a lot easier, a lot more simple than the Windows world. So if you're running into problems, the issue most likely is, is you're overthinking things. And so just try to roll it back a bit, try to think about doing things a little bit more simply, and you'll most likely be able to figure out what you need to do. So with that, let's go over uh, to the machine and I'll show you how all this works. So here we are at my Ubuntu server. Again, we're using 18.04.3 uh, for this demonstration, uh, but add user has basically been the same for <laughs> decades and will most likely be the same for another decade or two. So you really shouldn't run into any issues if you're using a different version of the Ubuntu server operating system. So with that, I'm gonna log in. So my main account that I've been using is this account called Bob, and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, because that's what makes my life better. We log in and we get the normal screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do clear to clear the screen so that we get back to a blank screen. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to do an add user. So all I need to do is sudo super user do. So we need to escalate our privileges up to that root level uh, ability to do things. And then we're going to add user. Nice, nice simple command. Nice simple Linux command. You're going to add a user and the command is add user. You can't make it any more easy than that. And we are going to add a user, uh, let's say Tim. We're going to add the user Tim and then we're going to hit enter. Uh, so it's going to ask us this right here. We're asking for the password for Bob. So it is important when you're doing this, you're going to be asked for passwords in different places. And so you do have to keep in mind what password uh, they're asking for something. So for this, they're asking for my password. And so my password is one, two, three, four, five, six. 
hit enter. So adding uh, adding Tim, it's created the Tim, created the uh, the directory for Tim, uh, so on and so forth. So here it's creating home directory. So Tim's uh, profile directory is going to be home Tim. Uh, then it's asking now enter a new Unix password. At this point, it's now asking for the password for Tim. What is Tim's password going to be? Again, we're going to make this simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Going to ask to retype one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to hit enter. So from this point, it asks us for some profile information. Now it is important here, depending on what you're doing with your particular server, uh, you can leave this all blank. None of the rest of this matters. The only thing that really matters is the, the username and the password. That is what is actually useful for Linux. Uh, the rest of this is basically a little house keeping things so you know if you're building the server and these user accounts or actual employees in your company you may want to plug in information here uh, but honestly again if this is simply a web server and you simply need a couple of uh, user accounts in order to do different type of maintenance tasks I would argue more or less to leave this blank but we can do go here and we can simply say this is Tim Mick Coolio Tim McCoolio, that is his full name. Then it's ask, going to ask for his room number. You gotta make his room number two. It's asking his phone number, 111 hyphen 222 hyphen 3333. Home phone number, 222 hyphen 333 hyphen 4444. Hit enter, other. Hey, mom. Uh, you know, whatever other information. Uh, again, this is one thing. If you do create a user account for things like services, something like that, in this other here, you might actually want to just put a comment of, hey, this user account was created for email services, something like that, uh, because that, that can be useful. Again, one thing you have to be remembering, uh, whenever you build a Linux system, whenever you build anything for infrastructure, it's not about you maintaining it. It's not about whether you can maintain it a year or two from now. It's about when you leave the company or organization and somebody else has to come in behind you and figure out what the hell's going on can they know what's going on so if you put a comment in here again for any kind of uh, user account you're creating for services that can make their life a hell of a lot easier not to mention I'll just put this in there not to mention that a lot of times you forget things that you don't think you're gonna forget so three years from now when you come back to maintain the system uh, having put your own notes there might actually make it a little more helpful for you YouTube. So anyways, the other is just simply for a note thing. Uh, we hit enter. Is this information correct? We hit yes. Uh, and then we simply go back to the prompt. Uh, so that, that's really uh, all there is there. Uh, so we do clear. One of the things we can look at now is we can look at something called the password file. Uh, so uh, we can do vim. So we're simply going to use vim. So I'm not doing sudo vim because I do not plan to edit the password file. That's an important thing. Remember, sudo vim will allow you to edit the password file. Uh, for a lot of these files, if I simply use vim, it will open it up as a read only. And again, this is something that can be useful just to make sure you don't fat finger something. If you if you open something as read only, uh, then if nothing else, you know you can't screw it up. Right, so I'm going to open it up as read only. Uh, so uh, forward slash, so forward slash is the root directory, uh, etc is the folder under root, uh, and then there's a file called password, password, p a s s w d, because of course it is. They can't just make it a password file, don't be ridiculous. Uh, and then we're going to hit. Uh, and so we open this up and yay, we get a whole bunch of information here that probably looks like gobbledygook to you. But these are in fact all of the user accounts uh, that are currently on this uh, Linux system and it gives you some information about these accounts. And again, one of the things you'll notice is Damon, Ben, Sys, Games, LP News, right? All of these user accounts are used for specific services in the Linux operating system. Uh, and so again, it is a good practice to think about that if you create a specific user account to do a specific task, uh, it makes it harder for the system to be hacked, right? Again, you think about it with with hacking and basically hackers will use all the permissions that are given to something right so if you give one user account a whole bunch of permissions again that whole thing if you give one user account root permissions to a server then if a hacker can compromise that one root account they basically own the server uh, the same is true with with giving uh, user accounts uh, lesser 
lesser uh, permissions, right? If you give one user account permission over FTP and permission over, you know, I don't know, SMTP and permission over a number of different things, then if a hacker can compromise that one account, then not only do they get access to FTP, but they also get access to F uh, SMTP and they might get access to MySQL and they might get access to enough things that they can then hack around and get access to the whole system. So if you create specific accounts to do specific tasks, uh, that is one way to try to make the system a little bit more secure. Uh, but if we go down here, again, we can take a look. And so in blue, uh, this light blue on the left-hand side, these are the user names. These are the, the user names for the accounts. Uh, and if we go all the way down, uh, we can see Bob. So Bob is the account that I use. We can see the full name of Bob is simply Bob. His home directory is home Bob. Uh, ben Bash, don't worry about that. Uh, then I created a uh, account Ralph. Just screwing around, create an account Ralph. Again, we go over here, see his full name is Ralph. Home Ralph. Uh, then we come down here to Tim, that account that we just created. And we go over here, Tim McCoolio. He's in room number two. His phone number is 111, but uh, his uh, home phone number is 222. And the comment is, hey, mom. And again, so that's something to be thinking about with uh, with using using that little comment there again if you create a specific account with uh, in order to do something somebody could come into the password file and go oh okay so this account was created to do uh, x y or z and so that's really all there is to the password file and this is an easy way to go in see if an account has been created um, and then and then go from there and take a look at the information so with that uh, since this is vim uh, all we're going to do oops, is we're going to do colon Q. So colon Q will quit us out of them. Since we haven't done any modifications, we don't need to do a force quit. We don't need to do a save quit because we haven't modified anything. So we can simply do colon Q and we can't get out of this. Uh, so there we go. So now we are back at the Bob screen. And so it's important to understand. So if we take a look at this, uh, we are in the user account Bob at server. So this, uh, this uh, host name, the server name of this server is server, and we are at the Bob user account. So one thing just to take a look at is we can exit out of the Bob user account, and we come back here. And so we created the Tim user account, so I can log in as Tim. We can ask for the password, one, two, four, five, six. Hit enter, and yay, now I am logged in as Tim. Now the important thing, again, something to be thinking about is when you're logged into a system. So if you sit down at a system and it's already been logged in, again, horrible security procedure. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Always log out of the system. But just in case you sit down in the system, maybe you're doing maintenance tasks before, you forget who you're logged in as. Uh, if you come up here, this is your user account at the server name. So you can just verify uh, that you're using uh, the right user account. Uh, from here, if I want to do something such as change my password. So now I log in as Tim. So I give Tim the default password. Everybody has the password of 123456. So Tim, when you log in, your password is 123456, but you need to change your password once you've logged in. So all Tim has to do is use the pass, the pass, would p a s s w d command so the password command the password command uh, is what allows you to change your password so you hit enter so it asks for the current unix password so i have one two three four five six is the current unix password i hit return it asks for a new password uh, so let me do one two three four five six seven is the new password retype one two three four five six seven is the new uh, unix password uh, bad. New and old passwords are too similar. Well, there you go. I actually wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. But hey, that just goes to show you, there, there is a little bit of stuff there in Linux. Uh, so enter a new Unix password. I don't know. Uh, we'll do one, six, five times. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. New password cannot be a palindrome. <laughs> Okay, well, this uh, this is getting a little more 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 interesting here. Uh, let me just uh, p a s s w o r d p a s s w o r d 
Password updated successful. Oh, there you go. So now I changed my password to password. Uh, so again, these are the little stupid things that you can run into the Linux world. That is that is a lesson for you that I wasn't expecting to give you. So just something that you may run into. So the uh, the the command in order to change your own password is P A S S W D. You put in your old password and then you put in your new password. Can't be too similar. Can't apparently be a palindrome. Like. Seriously, where the hell did can't be a palindrome come from? That's default. I didn't do that. Uh, but anyways, then you got plugged into something that the Ubuntu gods like, and then your password is changed. So from here, let me show you how to change a password for a user. Uh, so we're going to exit out, and we're going to log back in as Bob. So Bob is our root, is our administrator account. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so now let us change the password for Tim. So again, let's say we need to get into Tim's account or whatever else. And so if you're here, in order to change the password for the user, what we're going to do is sudo super user do, escalate the privileges. Then we are going to do P-A-S-S-W-D uh, for password, and that is the command. And then we're going to do the user account that we are changing the, the password for. Then from there, uh, we simply hit enter, uh, enter a new Unix password. And so for this, uh, all we're going to do is the new password uh, for Tim. And so this is Tim's password. Uh, we're just going to put him back in one, two, three, four, five, six to make my life easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, type retype. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit enter. Password updated successfully. So if you want to change your own password, the simple command is P-A-S-S-W-D. If you are the root user, the administrative user, in order to change the password for somebody else is sudo password uh, and then whatever the user account name that is for Tim. Uh, now let us go and take a look at the, the change, uh, basically being able to change the profile if we want to change things. So with that, let's clear the screen again. And for here, we're going to change uh, Tim's profile. So we're going to do sudo chfn, uh, and then we're going to do the user account name. So we're going to do Tim. And so when we do this, uh, basically it comes up here, and so it gives us the full name. So it's Tim McCoolio, um, and we're going to leave Tim McCoolio as it is. Uh, then it's going to ask for the room number. We're going to say, well, we're going to swap him over to room number seven. It's going to ask for the password uh, or the uh, the phone number. So we're going to put it at 888-777. Uh, 9999. We're going to go down the home phone number. Let's just say that's the same. Uh, any other information, we're just going to leave that the same. And then there we go. If we go and we take a look at that password file, so we're going to take a look at Vim etc p a s s w d. We can now open this up, and as we can see, this user profile information has been changed for Tim McCoolio. He is now in room number seven. His phone number is now 888-777-9999, so on and so forth. So you can see that information. Uh, so with that, let us get out of here. Oops. Let's get out of here. Again, colon Q. That is what is what will quit us out of them if we have not made any modifications. Let me do clear to clear the screen. And now I just want to show you a little bit of the user mod command. So with the user mod command, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo. Uh, then we're going to do user mod. And then I'm not actually going to do anything here. I'm just going to do sudo user mod Tim. Uh, and when you do this, you're actually going to get kind of like a man page. It's going to give you some information for the user mod. And from here, you can see uh, the different options to be thinking about with user mod. And so when you take a look at it for usage, uh, so you have user mod, then you put in options, then you put in login. So how this normally should be is sudo user mod, and then you know hyphen C, hyphen D, hyphen E, put all the, uh, the options in there, and then you put in login information. We're not gonna worry about that right now. One of the things I did wanna show you with the user mod command that I do think is interesting and something that you might wanna look at is you can actually lock the user account. So again, one of the things to be thinking about is you create user accounts. Sometimes you no longer want the user account to be uh, used, but you don't necessarily want it to be deleted. Maybe it's a user account for doing migrations. Maybe it's a user account for doing preventive maintenance, something like that. 
that. And so one of the things you can do is you can come in here and you can actually lock the user account. And then later you can come back and unlock the user account. And so these are just some of the options that are available to you uh, with with the user profiles that you may not have seen before. And just, again, one of those random things to think about whether or not you use them very often. Uh, so with that, let us clear the screen again, and I will show you how to actually go about uh, deleting users. And so from here, all we have to do is uh, we're gonna delete the Tim user. And so we look at, take a look at this, and we're currently logged in as Bob at server. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to delete the uh, Tim user account. All we do is DEL user, and then whoever it is, Tim, uh, sudo del user Tim. Then we're going to hit enter. Um, removing Tim, warning group 10, has, Tim has no more members, done. So basically now uh, the Tim user account has been deleted. But I want to show you something here. So let me do the PWD command to show us where we're at. I'm going to change directory. I'm going to go up to the home directory. And then I'll do ls l and list the directories uh, that are still up in the home directory. And what we'll notice is we still have Bob, which is us. We still have Ralph, the user account we haven't dealt with today. Uh, but the Tim, the Tim folder is still there. You still have that Tim profile folder there. And so we are going to want to, to delete that, that Tim uh, profile folder. So what we can do uh, then is we can use the uh, sudo rm hyphen rf command. So basically with the uh, sudo and remove is to remove. This is the uh, the command to remove a directory. And then we do hyphen rf. And so why we're going to do hyphen rf is because the directory actually has stuff in it. So when Linux creates a profile directory, it will then populate that profile directory with different files that are required for a profile. So if you simply do the rm command without the extra arguments, uh, it'll fail out because it's not an empty folder. So we use hyphen rf, uh, and this will go through and it will remove every, it will remove the folder and everything in it. And then from here, uh, what we're going to do is the path. Uh, so it's going to be home, and then it's going to be temp. So again, it's important to be thinking about, especially whenever you do something like a remove command, is make sure you put put in uh, the exact uh, path that you're going for. Uh, not time, actually, not time. Uh, so here, again, so from the root directory, the home folder in the root directory, and then we want to delete the temp folder in the home folder. So wherever you're at, you can do that. And then if you press enter, it's now done. If we do ls hyphen l, we can see that we now have the Bob folder and we have the Ralph folder. So Tim is now entirely gone. And that's the basic idea about how to add users, how to change passwords, how to change uh, users' profiles, understanding the password, the P-A-S-S-W-D file a little bit, how to delete a user, and then how to delete the profile folder for the user once they've been removed. So again, overall, relatively simple. Uh, the main Thing that you're going to run into is uh, in the Windows world, you can do a, a whole bunch more. And so one of the big problems people run into is they think about Linux as if they're dealing with Windows, and then, then they basically try to make things more complicated than they actually are. And so that's really all there is uh, to, to the basic user administration in Linux. So there you go. Now to be clear, now to be clear, it is Linux, it is Linux. So there's 20,000 more things you can do. So many arguments, so many options, so much, to be polite, idiocy that you can do if you really want to get into it. So if you're interested about the, the different things that you can do with user accounts, uh, you can go and you can take a look. One of the things that I would warn you about, again, in the, the real world of Linux, is really ask yourself if you want to be creating Linux ac accounts from the command line, or you, do you want to use some other type of software in order to create user accounts? Again, there's something called Samba. Samba is... Uh, Oh, basically uh, Linux's version of an Active Directory server. And so one of the things that you may be thinking about is like, oh, cool, I'm going to create all these user accounts. But remember, you're creating these directly in the Linux operating system. And one of the questions to really ask yourself is, is that really what you want to do? Or do you want to add an additional piece of software, or pieces of software, or something like Samba or some kind of other user account software and actually run your user accounts through that additional software? 
I would argue that's probably what you're going to do at the end of the day. Uh, the idea being is those additional layers of software, when you add a user account there, they may add user account to the password file in Linux, but they'll also do 20 other different tasks, right? You create a uh, user account in Samba or something else, and not only does it create a user account, but it also creates an email account. It also does this, it 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 does this. It does this. Uh, and so that is a more effective way of dealing with user accounts and a Linux infrastructure than simply adding users at the command line. But uh, this can be very useful, again, from a security standpoint, creating user accounts that it can only do specific things within the Linux operating system, that can be valuable. Or if you're playing around and doing other things, um, like possibly like if you create an FTP server, so let's say you want users to be able to upload uh, to, to your Linux server for whatever reason, so that you create an FTP server. Uh, in that situation, you may create users at the command line for all of your different FTP users. Basically, when they log in, they will then get dumped to wherever the, the profile tells them to get dumped. Uh, that's something that you might do with a command line, creating users, deleting users. Uh, but generally, generally, I would not be creating creating a lot of user accounts, again, from that infrastructure type standpoint, uh, just from the command line. So that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Uh, but really, that, that's all there is to it. Again, you got a, uh, add user, you got the password, uh, P-A-S-S-W-D command. So with that command, you can change your own password. Or again, if you're logged in as the root, you can change passwords for other users. Uh, the ETC slash password, P-A-S-S-W-D uh, file, that contains the information for all your user accounts. So you can do, go there see all the user accounts that are on the system. You can see all of that additional information. Again, I would say really think about writing notes uh, for or comments for why you're creating specific user accounts. That, that can be useful when you go back to try to clean up a system. Again, imagine a Linux system for whatever reason you're creating uh, users at the command line, right? When you create five or six users, it's no big deal. It's very easy to keep track of. But you should think about it. what happens when we create 50 users? What happens when we create 200 users? What happens when it's three or four years from now and you're going back and you're looking to do maintenance and just get rid of, of old user accounts uh, by simply having little notes to say why the hell a user account existed? That can be a very useful thing. Again, I show you the CHFN uh, command that allows you to change the profile uh, information if that's something that you want to do. I show you that user mod command. We didn't actually use the user mod command, but that's where you can do things like you can lock a user account if you want to. Again, that might be very valuable. Show you how to delete a user. And then again, remember just because you delete the user account doesn't mean the profile folder has been deleted. And again, from a preventive maintenance standpoint, I would highly argue to delete those profile folders, or you can just get a whole big old mess of profile folders and you can run into some issues. So those are some things to think about with adding and deleting users and being able to manage users on a Linux system. As always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you in the next one.